Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we'll be taking a look at how to create your own components for your actors in Unreal Engine 5. We'll be working with Blueprint this time. If you guys do want a C++ version as well, I'll be totally happy to do that. So make sure you guys do comment. Also, the video which you're screen on, seeing on screen is a game called Enigma, which I'm working on, which aims to unify gamers of all genres. So if you are interested, stay tuned for my further videos. I will be updating it once it is necessary. All right, guys. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, you can also visit my Discord server. Link is down in the video description. And if you guys do wish to support me, my Patreon page is also down there. So let's get started. So let's create an actor first of all. So I'll just call this one my actor, for example. And inside here, we have a default scene root. And this in itself is just a plain scene component actually. So how you actually go about creating components? Head into blueprint class and you'll notice two types of components. The first one is an actor component and another one is a scene component. Now an actor component is the most basic type of component which you'll use. So my actor component for example. And if I open it up. As you'd see, you don't have a viewport or anything like that. You just have a simple event graph. And this is basically a component which does not have a transform. So if I add it, if I add my actor component, you'll notice that it does not come under the hierarchy over here. Rather, it comes separately, just like something such as the character movement. So if I drag this in, I cannot because this does not have a transform and there is nothing in the viewport which I can control regarding this actor. However, what I can do is add some logic, which, you know, what I can do with this is basically add some logic and add this component to whichever actor I want this logic to persist in. For example, we can track the time for which this actor has been spawned. So if I go ahead and grab in a float and if I just go ahead and add it and we can alt track this to set it. So as simple as that. And on our actor tick, what we can do is we can get our component and from here we'll get our time. Whoops, we'll get our time. And we can go ahead and print it out. Now if I do that, so we have an error somewhere. So we had to compile this first, then compile this, the error will go. So go ahead and press play. And nothing's happening because we don't have our actor in the scene. So you need an instance obviously for this to work. So if I go ahead and do this, as you can see, we get our time printed. And if we go ahead and add a delay over here and spawn in one more actor, so I can press D on my keyboard for delay. What I can do is I can just go ahead and spawn another actor, spawn actor from class. We can just get my actor. And spawn transform let it be zero. So as you can see, after one second, it is spawning another actor and its timer is working independently. So the component is handling that for us. Great. Now what if you wanted something like a cube or maybe, you know, uh, a mesh which should do something. Now you could just go ahead and add the component like this. But you do not have too much control over what you do. Like you do not have access to its begin play. You do not have access to its tick. The way you will do it is create a scene component. So call this one my scene component. And if I were to add this over here. So if I were to add my scene component. As you will see it will come under the hierarchy of default scene root. But there is one major problem with this. The problem is there is no visual representation. If you want to add visual representation to bare scene components, I highly suggest you do it in C++ as it is much harder to do it in Blueprint. So as you see, I can drag this in. Maybe I can use this as a reference point, but beyond that, nothing much. So how do you actually do something with this? So you can make use of this, we'll delete this off first things first. So this is gone. What you can do is instead of creating a bare scene component, you can create one of the derived class of scene component. So if I type in scene component over here, as you'll see, under scene component, so I'll just look it up over here. So I'll just type in component, I'll get it. 
so under scene component basically so i have actor component and i have scene component now under scene component i have these various options camera component light component whatever primitive component is what we are interested in and under primitive component usually you will go for static or skeletal mesh so let's go for static mesh for now although the name is static it need not be static the mesh itself is not going to change but you can change the position rotation and scale of the mesh that's what static mesh means it does not mean that it cannot move so create a static mesh component and over here you can go ahead and select let's say a cone for example now if i add this so my static mesh component in the viewport you will notice that we have a cone and we can move it relative to that as simple as that now if you were to adjust the transform over here as you'll see it is going to reflect over here as well in the defaults so i can put zero over here i can make this zero as well so as simple as that now another thing to know that if you want to add multiple static meshes again it's going to be complex in blueprint you'd rather use c++ if you guys want to follow up i can do that now another point is that this static mesh itself is not the static mesh component what you actually move rotate and scale which i will demonstrate now is the static mesh component the static mesh itself is just an asset and if i go ahead and browse to it by clicking on the magnifying glass icon over there you'll notice that it takes you to the static mesh and this is just going to be loaded inside this component so this static mesh itself is going to stay as is and what you are actually dynamically changing is the component that is the concept which you need to get clear so just as an example let's say add local rotation and if you'll notice the target is the scene component and not static mesh so go ahead and let's say we just add one one and one doesn't really have to make any sense now if i go ahead and run this as you can see our cone is rotating and obviously this logic will be replaced by your own logic i just demonstrated one possibility of course it will depend on your game entirely on what you want to do so that's about it guys that's basically how you use scene components and actor components and you you can create endless amounts of components using these and you can make your code modular generally you will also want to make some of these inside plugins so that you can use it in your other projects which is probably one of the main reasons to use components plugins and stuff like that so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching if you guys did learn something new and enjoy the video make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos goodbye